Welcome to another moment in the Word. How can you have peace? How can we have peace in the world? In fact, in the 6,000 years of human history, there have been very few years in which there hasn't been some conflict somewhere in the world. How can we have peace, even in a marriage, if we can't have peace in the world? And how can we have peace internally? How can we have peace with ourselves? How can we have peace with our neighbors? Or how can we have peace with God? Well, that's the issue that we find here as Moses is acting as a peacemaker and addressing this very problem of brethren that are having conflict with themselves. Here we find it's in chapter uh, 7 of the book of Acts in verse 26, and we're meditating down to verse 28. And the next day he, Moses, showed himself to them as they strove, and would have set them at one, again saying, Sirs, your brethren, why do you wrong one another? But he uh, that did his brother wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made you ruler and judge over us? And will you kill me? like you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Ah, oh, this is an incredible passage. There's a whole lot here, and you'll need to spend more time yourself in meditating. Remember, the real object of meditating in God's Word and studying it is not so that you know more about the Bible. It's so that you know more about God. It's so you have a deeper relationship with him, that you love him, and that you're changed by the word. And so as we look at this, we can need and ask the Holy Spirit to look and examine us. So we find the very first word is actually a conjunction. It's an in the English, te in the Greek, and it's just simply linking what went before. What went before is they didn't understand. They, meaning the Jewish people, he came to his own and his own received him not. Those words were applied to Jesus. Now we have Moses. He supposed that his brothers would understand, that his brothers would connect the dots, that they would connect the pieces and understand he was to be God's deliverer, a messenger, and that he would bring peace. And so consequently, the next day, he shows himself unto those as they were striving. The word for striving there is a really interesting word. It means to dispute. We find that that word is used actually several times in the New Testament. It's used in the book of Acts, or excuse me, used here obviously in the book of Acts, but it's used also in James, and in James chapter 4, where he says, For where come wars and fightings among you? Wars is where we have a clash of arms, a clash between nations or city-states or large groups of people. But then we have, and fightings, it's the same Greek word from among you. And he goes on to say that, you fight and war and you kill, you desire to have and you have not, you fight and you war, the same word again for fight, and you have not because you ask not, you ask and receive not because you're not asking of God. In other words, we're trying to resolve our problems. We're trying to resolve the dispute. And that's really at the heart because James is saying, from where come these wars and fightings? Do they not come from here, from the lusts that war in our own members? We have a desire, and we think that our desire is better than somebody else's desire. There's where the problem is. I have to find the peace of God that passes understanding, the peace that God gives that reconciles brothers. And so consequently, that's what we have here. He, Moses, comes and he sees these brothers that are striving between each other. And he has shown himself. Now, that's what it says in the Greek. But actually, in the, in the English, in the Greek, it would be he appeared. It's in the passive voice. That's interesting. Because passive means that Moses didn't come and say, here I am. No, he appeared. It's interesting that that 
voice in terms of appearing as applied to Jesus and to angels. In other words, it was a supernatural awareness. He came and God is doing something. There are times when you don't understand what's going on. I don't understand what's going on. And God then opens our eyes and we see it. That's what's going on here. Moses appears and what he finds are these brothers that are striving and in conflict with one another. And then as they strove, and he uh, one, he tried to, and it says, would have set them at one. In the Greek, that word would have set, it's the same word that's also used in James, where it says that as a ship is driven with the wind. In other words, it's pushed. That's what the word means. He tried to force it. He tried to push them together. He tried to get them to reconcile. You know, in the flesh, in our minds, with the best of intentions, we can't cause two people who are aliens to one another to agree. Why not? Because remember again, James said, the problem's in the heart. Just because we have people that have, have an armistice and have laid down their weapons, that doesn't mean we've changed their hearts. There's the heart that has to be changed, and that only can happen when God does it. There has to be a change of heart. And so, consequently, he tried to set them at one. Well, the Greek word actually is irene, and that word actually is the same word that we have in Arabic, shalom, or in Hebrew, shalom. And it means one, but it means more than one. It means that I desire for my enemy prosperity. I want them to do well. I don't want them to stop fighting. That's not peace. That's just an armistice to reload. No, instead, we want harmony. You see, God has given us the gift of ministry in reconciliation. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself so that we can have peace, peace with each other for sure, but also peace with God. And so we find that he says, and again saying, sirs or men, your brethren. Why does he emphasize that? Well, because remember, he was doing a thorough inspection of his people, the children of Israel, and also his brethren. He may have been adopted as an Egyptian, but he never forgot that he had a bloodline with the people of Israel. And now he's calling them, brethren, you need to reconcile. But you see, that's been the history of war all the way back to Genesis chapter 4, where Cain killed Abel. They were brothers. Where we go back to Genesis and in chapter um, 27, where we have uh, Jacob and Esau, and Jacob stealing the birthright of his brother. Or the older brothers then selling Joseph into slavery. There's been this battle that's going on between family members, and maybe it's in your family. Maybe you're seeing what's going on in the Middle East now is a war between family members, those who are all claiming Abraham as their father. Oh, my dear one, if you don't have peace with God, you can never have peace with anyone else, even if you're of the same blood. So it's really important that we acknowledge that we need the blood of Christ to reconcile us. So he then points out, why are you fighting with one another? You're brethren. Why do you wrong one another? And that word that we see that's wrong there, the same word that we looked at yesterday, adikomai or adiko is the word dik, which means righteousness. You're being unrighteous. You're being unlawful to one another. You're hurting one another because you're violating the principles of justice and the principles of righteousness. You see, righteousness exalts a nation. It brings it together. And rebellion against God 
will always divide and destroy. So what happens? That's the question that Moses asks them. Why do you wrong one another? Now the answer, verse 27. But he that did his neighbor wrong, it's the same word, a deco, and he says, they thrust him, they pushed him away. They literally repudiated, rejected Moses, just like they rejected Christ. And they said two questions. Who made you ruler and judge over us? You know, that same question was asked uh, in Jesus in the uh, parable of the talents. Who made you ruler over us? The same question that was asked by Dathan uh, to Moses later on. Moses is rejected, by the way. This isn't the only time. He's rejected throughout his life while he's leading the children of Israel through the wilderness. They're rejecting him again and again and again. And so many times people are rejecting Christ. And why are they rejecting Christ? Because they didn't understand. Remember, that's the context for this. That they understood not. And because they didn't understand who Jesus is, they rejected Jesus. Jesus even said one time as he's entering into Jerusalem, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times I would have gathered you together as a mother hen would her chicks. But you would not if only you understood this day of visitation. It's so important that we understand. And how do you understand? By reading and first of all, meditating on the Word of God. And I mean the entire Word of God, both the Tanakh, the Old Testament, and the New. And secondly, that you pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to open your mind and your heart to accept so that you understand, because it's an understanding you accept Messiah in their failure to understand Moses and his calling of God on his life and actually as a deliverer of their lives, they then rejected him, repudiated him. And they do it, notice two questions. The first one is a challenge of his authority. Who made you ruler and judge over us? And the word for judge is the very opposite of the word adikomai, where we have the A is the negation, the not, and then dik is the word righteous. The word for judge means to execute righteousness. Jesus is our righteousness. He has been declared righteous by the Father, and so he is our judge. There's the authority, but they've rejected the authority of Moses. The second thing Will you kill me as you killed the Egyptian today? They're challenging now his ethical and legal, his law, his authority in executing the law. You see, it's really interesting how the Holy Spirit has led Stephen in the speaking of this sermon or this message. They had accused him of rejecting Moses of rejecting the authority of God and of rejecting the law. Here, by just telling history, he is illustrating that the Jewish people have historically rejected, and this is not saying everyone does, but many have rejected Moses as the lawgiver, as the authority, and as the law, the lawgiver. I want to say that it's not important just to acknowledge that he is the lawgiver. It's important that we acknowledge God is the lawgiver that he gave to Moses and that we apply the law to our lives. That's what makes the difference. And the law, it really does bring harmony and peace. I pray you have peace with God today. Father, thank you and praise you for your gift, your word, your holy law that you've given to us, and the grace that comes through the blood of the Lord Jesus that truly does set us free. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.